What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 worst endings to wrestling undefeated streaks. Now, we've seen it plenty of times in wrestling where a company decides to uh, go with a, a particular wrestler. And, you know, they have this wrestler going this amazing undefeated streak. You build them up as a major player in that company, someone that you should look out for potentially future world champion or whatnot and in some cases they end up winning said company's championship only for their streak to end up being uh i guess you can say ruined in a fashion where it doesn't make sense or it it doesn't enhance the person that actually beat their undefeated streak like you think all this time you know being undefeated for maybe a year plus only for them to lose in a, an anticlimactic way. You're just like, well, what the hell? They just lost like that? That's how they lose? Not to build somebody else up? They lose in a stupid fashion? We've seen it so many times. It's crazy. Like, streaks can be made, but once, like, the booking for them to be broken, it's usually not that good. So we're going to check out some of the times where streaks were just ruined, <laughs> you know, in horrible fashions. We're going to check that out. Appreciate all love and support, you know, and uh, let's get right into this one. Should be a good video, man. A few things in wrestling are as impressive as a good undefeated streak. Off the top of my head, Chris Masters traps and Kevin Nash's hair. One way to get a wrestler over <laughs> as a certifiable badass is to have them go on a long run of matches without taking an there L. There we go. And then when somebody does beat them, they also look like a monster. Yeah. And that's how it works all the time, right? Right? No. Sadly, no, <laughs> as wrestling companies throughout the ages have consistently messed up the ending to unbeaten runs. I just said that. It's like they're, they're, they're good at making someone look like a legit star, but when it comes to them actually losing the match and then potentially building someone else up a lot of times it don't even work causing embarrassment instead of creating stars there i'm adam pachiti from cultaholic wrestling and these are the oh, 10 worst endings to one, wrestling man. undefeated streaks join us by the way this list does not include pay-per-view specific streaks so no undertaker here on with the mm. list okay, number 10 chris jericho that. on aew dynamite during aew's early days no one was presented as strongly as le champion chris jericho not only did the leader of the inner circle become the first ever aew champion at all out but he went on a lengthy undefeated streak that claimed victims such as darby allen kenny omega and cody rhodes this all changed changed after Full Gear 2019. Jericho and Sammy Guevara challenged Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky for their recently won AEW Tag Team Championships. SoCal Uncensored retained the gold after Sky pinned Jericho in a move that nobody saw coming. Mainly because it was a bit of a dumb idea. Jericho hadn't lost once since the company formed, and many expected his first defeat to come when he dropped the title. Mm -hmm. Instead, it was given to a wrestler who was already a champion in a random tag team match yeah. on Dynamite. The company tried to follow up on this by having Sky challenge Y2J for the world title, yeah. but the crowd just didn't get behind him. I mean, at least Sky will always have this accolade to celebrate, and we think that deserves a little bit of the bubbly. Wow. <laughs> it's one of those things where we kind of seen it with Roman Reigns, even though that's a little bit different because there's a story behind that. There's a story behind Jay pinning roman reigns he's he's never been pinned well he hasn't been pinned in over three years so that streak is done and you know I, it, it makes sense you know he's not a champion jay's not a champion at the time this kind of it's a weird way for them to set that up you know i wouldn't have had jericho get pinned there or whatnot but it's a weird way they set that up for him to have a match request a one-on-one -on -one match because you you pin the champion you know and there's no like kind of setup so it's similarities but once again the j situation they've built that up for years it kind of makes sense well it does make sense in a storyline sense of what they're trying to do there with j and roman compared to this so 
That's not been popular for a long time, has it? Number nine, Tatanka on WWE Superstars. Playing on wrestler Chris Chavez's real-life Native American ancestry, a rare piece of self-awareness from WWE at the time, Tatanka was a popular upper mid-carder during the early 90s. For almost two years, Mr. Bison, that's what the word actually means by the way, was unbeaten mm. in WWE. I mean, Damn. he was actually only unbeaten on TV, but this is wrestling, so give over. <laughs> this run of dominance came to an abrupt end on the October 30th, 1993 edition of Superstars, when Tatonga was finally beaten by Ludwig Borger. The Finnish powerhouse had recently debuted in the company under an anti-American gimmick, of uh, course, and of was course, on his yeah. own unbeaten run when he clashed with our man. Sadly, Tatonka had his legs thoroughly cut out from under him, losing in dominant fashion to the budget Brock Lesnar. <laughs> this is a case of WWE hitching their wagon to the wrong horse. If uh... Borger had turned out to be a bigger star, then maybe this moment wouldn't be on our list. Yeah. Unfortunately, he would leave the company just a little while later, making all of this for nothing. Number eight, Bo Dallas on Raw. Bray Wyatt's real-world little bro, Bo Dallas, made quite the splash in NXT when he reigned as their top champion for 280 days. He followed this momentum up by going on an unbeaten run upon his main roster debut in May of 2014. I forgot all about and that. my word, did he beat some big names. Fandango, Santino Morella, R-Truth, they all fell to Dallas's mighty hand. To his credit, he also beat the likes of Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston, so fair play. To immediately remove that credit, though, the streak <laughs> came to an end on a random episode of Raw against R-Truth, somebody he'd already beaten. <laughs> it seemed as if WWE just completely gave up on Bo's push before it had yeah. even got going. The 18 and Bo gimmick he was running with had some serious potential, not as a yeah. main event idea or anything, but as a solid mid-card one at the very... They could have ran with it a little bit more. That That's his gimmick, this obnoxiously positive even though he's not really that positive but just it just positivity got a bowl <laughs> they could have ran with that a little bit longer as a gimmick <laughs> 20 and bow you know what i'm saying they, they should have ran with it. It, it his gimmick was hilarious it worked and at that time but they were like ah we don't see it <laughs> released after a loss to truth it was downhill for the bow lever Number seven, Charlotte mm -hmm. Flair at Fastlane 2017. Is a streak really a streak if there are so many asterisks next to it? Uh. Well, WWE thought so throughout 2016 and 17, and who are we to argue with them? Between her call up to Raw in 2015 and the Fastlane show in 2017, Charlotte Flair did not lose a match. Well, she didn't lose a match on pay-per-view. Well, she didn't lose a singles match on pay-per-view. The company made so a huge answers. deal out of the Queen being unbeaten on big shows, even though Charlotte had actually tapped out to Sasha Banks during a tag team match at Battleground in 2016. <laughs> Everyone thought that this fake streak was going to end at the upcoming WrestleMania 33. Well, I guess we're all idiots because WWE ended it a month earlier for no decent reason. Whilst facing Bayley for the Raw Women's Championship, Flair looked to have the match won when the boss pointed out that she had got a handful of the champion's tights. This allowed the hugger to take the advantage and pin her opponent. So, the streak that wasn't a streak ended before the biggest show of the year? Yeah. Christ alive. Sounds about Number right. Number six, Mr. Perfect at WrestleMania Sounds 6. Sounds about right. As his surname everybody. would suggest, Mr. Perfect was pretty bloody good at wrestling, so good that he went unpinned or submitted on TV and pay-per-view for 15 months. Damn. Of course, there were all the house show losses to factor in, plus he didn't win the Royal uh, Rumble in 1990, but like we said earlier, this is wrestling. Yep. Then, all of a sudden, Perfect's luck took a turn for the worse, and he got beat twice in the space of a month. He was pinned for the first time on regional television by the Ultimate Warrior when the two legends faced off for the Intercontinental Championship at Madison Square Garden. Okay, losing to Warrior, that's not too bad. Yeah. Now what about the other one? Brutus Beefcake? You gotta be joking me! Sadly, the man of 1,004 gimmicks handed Perfect his first nationally televised loss at WrestleMania 6. Did Damn. Beefers gain much from this? Hell no. Did Perfect suffer as a result? Hell yes. Damn. Still, Hogan wasn't going over in the main event, so I guess they had to give his best bud a win instead, brother. Number five, <laughs> Ryback at Hell in a Cell 2012. An undefeated streak versus a lengthy title reign. It is mm. the formula that made WrestleMania 3 such a success and has worked for countless other programs across wrestling history. 
However, for every Hogan vs. Andre, there is a Ryback vs. CM Punk. Mm. The Straight Edge Superstar was nearing a year as WWE Champion when he met the big guy inside Hell in a Cell. Ryback had been unbeaten since his main roster debut, unless you count all the Skip Sheffield stuff, which we definitely don't. <laughs> so WWE faced a dilemma. Do they end Ryback's streak or give the incredibly green performer their top prize? Yeah. Well, luckily for them, there was a way out. A really, really dumb way out. Just when it looked like the rookie had the match in hand, the referee of all people hit him straight in his nads. The referee in question was Brad Maddox, a wannabe wrestler who wanted to make a name for himself in storyline. Well, mission accomplished, kiddo. You will forever be known as the guy who ruined Hell in a Cell 2012. And, he, and Ryback at the time was like super over. He was super over at the time. Well, and maybe one other thing. This incredibly stupid decision put the Ryback's momentum to a screeching halt yeah. in a clear case of WWE booking themselves into a corner. They should, Number four. They shouldn't have did it. Don't book that match if you're not going to pull the trigger. It's as simple as that. They they booked the they, they it's like they do that especially with hell in the cell matches they have some unstoppable force go against the champion in hell in the cell and it's like the fans are gonna want the unstoppable force to finally get the championship only for you to find some convoluted way to get themselves out of it don't book the match Asuka at WrestleMania 34. Oh, this Whilst right WWE here. had oh. to hide Bo Dallas's NXT losses to make his streak work, no such fibbing was required this when it came to the Empress of Tomorrow. Tough. Come WrestleMania 34 in 2018, Asuka had not been pinned or submitted since her very first NXT outing all the way back in October of 2015. That is 914 days. Just don't ask us how many matches that actually was because the internet has about a billion different answers to that. Asuka had booked her spot at Mania by winning the Royal this Rumble. Take so that, Mr. Perfect. And had selected SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte as her prey. <laughs> After an excellent match, Asuka won the title, continuing her undefeated streak <laughs> until she dropped the belt to a young up-and-comer to build them up. Nope. Just kidding. Obviously, Charlotte won. With little build-up or reason, the most impressive modern undefeated run in WWE came to an end. Charlotte did not need this feather in her cap, and the mystique that surrounded Asuka vanished in an instant. Number three. That, to this day, is the dumbest decision they could have ever fucking done. It made no sense, bro. From a booking standpoint, it just made no sense. It, it just didn't. <laughs> I... Charlotte didn't need that win. You could have... Uh, okay. <laughs> Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series 2002. 10. No, Ty Dillinger hasn't just turned up. That is the number of people who have pinned or submitted Brock Lesnar in his WWE career. <laughs> that list contains... That's fucking insane, bro. Brock Lesnar is the most overprotected wrestler in WWE history. Only 10. People have been and defeated this nigga. Ten. What? Some of the greatest technical workers of our generation. But wow. do you know who the very first name on it is? It's the bloody Big Show. Yeah. Just three months after winning it off the Rocket SummerSlam, yeah. Lesnar put his WWE Championship on the line against the Behemoth at Survivor wow. Series, despite some stark warnings from Paul Heyman. Had Brock not disregarded the wise man's words, we might have avoided this disastrous chain of events. After less than five minutes of match time, Heyman turned on his charge to join up with the future star of the Big Show show. One choke slam onto a chair later, and Lesnar got pinned for the very first time on That's TV crazy. anyway. I mean, do you really need me to explain this to you? The hottest young star in all of wrestling getting fed to the <laughs> Big Show crazy. at one of the lowest points in his career? That doesn't sound bad to you. Fine, suit yourself, but stay away from me, all right? Number two, The Fiend at Super Showdown 2020. Bray Wyatt has had some truly awful things happen to him across his WWE career, For but sure. few are as bad as the time his most impressive creation was fed to a middle-aged man in tiny shorts. 
Under his fiend persona, Wyatt defeated Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship in Saudi Arabia at 2019's Crown Jewel event. The spooky kettle had already gone off the boil following the train wreck that was Hell in a Cell a month earlier, but fans were hopeful that Bray's title reign would be a chance to reset. Yeah. And then Goldberg came along. <laughs> a match was booked for WWE's return to Saudi Arabia in February of 2020, pitting the champion against the company's resident nostalgia machine. Many expected the undefeated Fiend to breeze through Goldberg to continue his Granted, I mean, the Fiend only had like, what was it, like three or four matches? I think he wrestled as, at one point, the Mr. Rogers gimmick or whatnot once. Correct me if I'm wrong. It wasn't that many, he didn't have that many matches. Especially in the Fiend character. Up to that point, he didn't. I think he only had one with Finn Balor and then one with, uh, with uh Seth. Well, he had two matches. One ended in a no contest and held himself. That's stupid on its own. And then he beat Seth at the next pay per view. So uh, I don't think he had that many matches leading up to uh. Well, I think he maybe had a few more. I'm not sure. I mean, I know he was still. It wasn't. It wasn't like a lengthy streak. I don't believe it was a lengthy streak. Let me know if I'm uh, correct or not. But I don't think the he had too many matches before Goldberg. So I could be wrong there. Maybe he did. But it wasn't like something like, oh, the Fiend is on this undefeated streak type situation. It wasn't like, I don't think they I don't remember them bringing that up that much. So. Run of dominance. But the Crown Prince has no time for your logic. Big Bill beat Bray in just three minutes to three win the minutes. title. Snap the streak. I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of playtime. That's that's exactly what happened to him. Streak and end any semblance of credibility the fiend had left. This was a rough night, but it turns out the new champion was just getting his revenge from 22 years earlier because yeah. number one well, is Goldberg at Starcade yeah. 1998. Had to be on Wrestling's list. most famous undefeated streak, not belonging to a man named Mark, has to be the one Goldberg went on in WCW between mm -hmm. 97 and 98. The widely accepted number of wins in a row is 173, but this could put a hot air balloon to shame with the amount that it's been inflated. Regardless of the actual figures, Goldberg's run of dominance was absolutely awesome. He would come out with his team of security guards, hit a spear, then a jackhammer, then be home in time for tea. A perfect formula that was impossible to screw up until they did. Yep. As WCW's World Heavyweight Champion, Goldberg was put in the main event of Starcade 98 with the belt on the line. His opponent was Kevin Nash, getting some help from Scott Hall and a taser in the process. Taser, and bro. just like that, WCW's biggest homegrown success story was knocked from the top of the mountain. Makes you want to put your entire arm through a limousine window, doesn't it? Yeah, nah. They that 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 just made no sense. They just ruined it. Why? I, I don't know. I can be fair to Goldberg and say they definitely messed that up. Uh, for sure, back in the day, they they that made no sense. But comment down below. Let me know some other streaks if it wasn't listed on here that you feel like was ruined with bad booking, considering how it ended. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150k, and I'm still getting speedy YouTube rest and share with the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See you on the next one. Peace.